Adventures by Morse. Carlton E. Morse presents... The Cobra King Strikes Back, featuring Captain Friday. If you like high adventure, come with me. If you like the stealth of intrigue, come with me. If you like blood and thunder... Come with me. Two groups of people on strangely dissimilar projects have set out from San Francisco for French Indochina. By chance, they took passage on the same steamship. One party was headed by Dr. Howard Carter, archaeologist, scientist, explorer. Let him tell about his party. It is my object on this expedition to drive deep into Cambodia and the north-central part of French Indochina in search of a lost city, a sister city of the famous Angkor. In my party, I have Professor Lebrun, medical advisor, my assistant archaeologist, Perry Mills, and my daughter, Celia, who is acting as my secretary and historian for the trip. Oh, yes, likewise with us is a young Khmer student, Toquan. Strangely, on the steamship, we met an old friend, Captain Bart Friday. But let Captain Friday speak for himself. Yes, my right-hand man, Skip Turner, my secretary, Patricia Young, and I are doing a bit of a job for the French government for a change. We're transferring an international prisoner, a citizen of French Indochina, from Hawaii back to Saigon, French capital of Cochin, China. By coincidence, the prisoner, Fen Lo, is of the same race as Taquan, the student in Dr. Carter's party. Yes, Captain Friday was returning the prisoner, but one night at sea, Fen Lo escaped. In the search that followed, Celia's terrified voice was heard. The searching party found her safe, but with a strange, horrifying story. Last night, the steamship landed its passengers. Dr. Carter's party is staying at the Hotel des Douanes. And now, on this hot bake oven morning, the members are seated at an outdoor sidewalk table under the arches that mark the hotel's entrance. My, my, Celia. What a complexion. <laughs> I was never so pink in my life, Professor Lebrun. Oh, it's quite apparent that some young man has been whispering in your ear. Don't be absurd. It's the heat. Drink your cool mixture there and you'll feel better. Oh, and then I'll perspire, Father. Perspiration, my dear, is all that saves white people out in this country. Daquan, I actually hate you. You look so cool and comfortable. You do not need to envy anyone, Miss Celia. There you are, Celia. <laughs> Daquan always says the nicest things, and I actually think he means them. Where's Perry, Father? Well, I sent him over to the Hotel du Commandant de la Marine, where Captain Friday and his party are staying. You bring them here? Yes, Taquan. I want to get this business of Fen Lo's disappearance settled so that we can start north into the interior of Cambodia at once. But I know nothing, Doctor. You mean about the disappearance of Captain Friday's Cambodian prisoner? Yes. He's thoroughly convinced that Tok Kwan holds the key to the mystery. If he so desires, he can hold up our expedition until the matter is solved. Oh, I doubt whether he do that. Well, I want the thing thrashed out. I want Tok Kwan to leave Saigon with a clean slate. Otherwise, we're liable to meet trouble everywhere. We'll have enough difficulties without that. Oh, listen. What's that, Tok Kwan? The high priests are passing through with their pony train. Pony train? Yes. Small Cochin China ponies on which they carry their supplies for the monasteries. Oh, but the, the bells. The bells are fastened to the ponies' necks. Oh, look. Here they come. They will pass this way. <laughs> oh, Dad. Look at the little shaggy ponies. <laughs> they carry packs <laughs> large enough for camels. Hmm? Here they come. Golly, they were cute. And the months in their black habits and their faces covered, like something out of a thousand and one nights. They move right along in the heat of the day. <laughs> yes, the only thing in the whole country showing any animation. Hardly a creature moving on the streets. Well, here comes Captain Friday's party. Uh-huh, Skip Turner and Patricia. Captain Friday does all right for himself in the way of secretary. Oh, I'm crazy about her. On the later part of the voyage over, I noticed Perry Mills seemed to feel the same way. Oh, why shouldn't he? You and Patricia seem to have grown very fond of each other. Oh, yes. I wish you were going into the interior with us. So you found the energy to walk out in this sizzling heat, Patricia. <laughs> I've got a slave driver for a boss. 
For he goes, it's expected I tag along. <laughs> Morning, Miss Carter. Doctor? Hi, Professor LeBron. Oh, Skip Turner in fifth helmet and white guts. <laughs> That's me. Guess what the ladies order. What about something cool to drink? Oh, definitely. I'd like something with lime or mint in it. Oh, let me get the drinks for the crowd. We have to go to the bar at this hour. Oh, never mind then. Of course, everybody wants something. I'll take Skip along for company. I'm your man. Well, come along. Oh, by the way, Dr. Carter, may I borrow Taquan in about a half hour? Mm, yes, yes, of course. I've got this star sapphire spotted in a shop down the street. Uh, I like the stone, but uh, not the price. I thought perhaps Taquan could talk his fellow countrymen into being more reasonable. Would you do that for the professor, Taquan? Oui, oui, with pleasure. Oh, good. Oh, come along, Skip. We'll get the drinks. Yes, sir. I saw something tall and pink and frothy. I think I'll order a quart of it. And, Captain Friday, I want this matter cleared up once and for all. I intend taking Taquan with me into the interior, so if you have any charges to file against him, will you please discuss them with me here and now and see if we can't come to some understanding. Once a thing gets into the hands of the French government out here, there'll be no end of red tape. No, Dr. Carter, I have no charges to file against Taquan. I know in my own heart that he had something to do with the release of Fen Lo, my prisoner. But I have no proof. None whatever. Then you don't intend taking any action that will hold up my expedition? I intend keeping Taquan under observation. Dr. Carter, will you permit me to ask Taquan one question? Why, certainly. It's his privilege to answer or not. Taquan. Yes? Taquan, is Fenlo dead? Ah, uh, Miss Celia has told you... Never mind what Miss Celia told me. I'm asking you. Is Fenlo dead? Captain Friday, I cannot answer that. Won't you, mean? No, I, I, I cannot. Why not? For the same reason you cannot. I do not know. Miss Carter. Yes, Captain Friday? Miss Carter, will you go over your whole story again for me? You mean the night your prisoner escaped on the ship? Yes, please. Well, it was stuffy in my cabin, and I wasn't a bit sleepy, so pretty soon I slipped out of my room and down on the lower deck where I'd found a nice little corner out of the breeze and still could be quite close to the rail. Yes, yes. Well, I, I was in a shadow and awfully comfortable. Anyway, I hadn't been there very long when I when I must have dropped off to sleep. <laughs> you know how it is with the throbbing of the engines and the swishing of the water. Mm. And then what happened? Well, the next thing I knew, I was wide awake. There was a dark figure standing by the rail, almost in front of me, not ten feet away. And it was making the most blood-curdling wail. The Khmer death chant. Yes, Dad. Well, he stopped for a moment, and it was very still. Then he began again, and suddenly I saw the blade of his knife in his hand... Just a flash of it in the moonlight as he raised it and struck himself with it. Are you certain he plunged it into himself? Oh, he must have. His, his knees sagged and he had to hold himself up. That was when I screamed. Yes. Now, think very carefully. What happened after that? Well, he, he crawled up on the rail and... Then for the first time, I, I noticed there was something lying on the deck. A, a duffel bag or something. He pulled it up after him, onto the rail. Was it tied to him? Oh, there was a rope on it, but I couldn't be sure whether it was fastened to him. Did it seem very heavy? Well, it must have been. He had an awful time getting it up. And then both he and the bag plunged over the side. Is that it? Yes, sir. Just as Father and Perry ran down the deck. Here come drinks for everybody. Where's Professor Lebrun? We met Perry Mills, and the two of them went down to take another gander at that star sapphire. All right, pick your drink. There's him that likes airs frosted, and there's him that likes some iced. Oh, Skip, you shouldn't have brought me in any more. I haven't finished this one. Keep it. You'll need another and another and another to keep the little red devils away. Here you are, Captain. Oh, which one for me? Why, both of them. A green one and a yellow one. <laughs> Thanks for nothing. Taquan. Yes? Taquan, would you have any objections in assisting a friend to commit suicide? Uh, if it was his will, no. Sure you wouldn't. I know you guys. You wouldn't have any objection to doing the job yourself, either, if you thought you could get away with it, would you? It would depend most certainly upon the circumstances, Mr. Skip. <laughs> There's sure a lot of queer setups in this man's country. Have you felt it too, Skip? Felt it? I've seen it. Look out there in the street. All them kids practically as raw as the day they was born. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, but that doesn't mean that they're peculiar, Skip. That's just a custom. You know, after all, man suits his character, his customs, and his mannerisms to his environment. Oh, that's okay with me. They could do all that and still keep the shirts on, couldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> now, seriously, though, there is a strange atmosphere hanging over Saigon. Something secretive, something smoldering. And I'm not just talking about the mysterious East. It isn't the port of Saigon alone, Patricia. 
the whole of Cambodia, a veil of uncertainty, the sense of danger. But how exciting. What kind of danger, Dr. Carter? Well, don't you remember me telling you aboard ship how legend has woven a strange story about this land? How it's supposed that hundreds of years ago some strange force visited French Indochina and drove all the inhabitants from the great cities, wiped the cultivated lands of northern Cambodia free of civilization, and then the jungles and luxuriant plant life crept swiftly in and engulfed everything, everything that had been built by man. And you mean to say that that strange, same force still hangs over this part of the world? When you say something, do you mean the supernatural, Father? It's hard for an Occidental to say, Celia. There are strange, easty forces at work here, beyond our grasp or understanding. Well, mostly imagination, isn't it, Doctor? Wouldn't it be glorious to go with Dr. Carter's party? Couldn't we go? Hey, couldn't you arrange it, boss? We are going. You're what? Hey, are you kidding, wonderful. Captain? We're going with Dr. Carter. If doubling the size of his party won't be too much inconvenience. But, but Captain Friday, why on earth do you want to go into the interior of Cambodia? Yeah, what's the idea, Chief? <laughs> If I want to scramble through the brush, I'd rather go back to San Francisco and climb Mount Tamil Pius. It's safer. <laughs> Shame on you, Skip. I thought you were a fire eater. Mm -hmm. Sword swallowing's my specialty. <laughs> no, Carter, I'm serious. Well, Captain, this is most astonishing. I... Taquan, what's wrong? No. What's the matter? No. They must not go. Wait, what do you mean? I take you. I guide you. Many strange places. These others, they, they, they must not go. Hmm. Don't want me along, huh? Well, it's just too bad, Taquan, because I'm going. It is for your own good, I warn you now. Yeah? You mean we're sticking our necks out if we go? I cannot be responsible. Hey, Captain, I think I would like to go along on this trip. Sounds interesting. It's all settled. Dr. Carter, I'll stand our share of the expedition expenses. I'll guarantee that there'll be no interference with your scientific work. Why, under those conditions, I'd be delighted to have you. Patricia, did you hear that? You're going along. It's wonderful. Captain Friday, I'm your secretary for life. <laughs> uh, talk one. Where are you going? I am to meet Professor Lebrun and Mr. Perry. But why right at this moment? Oh, they have gone to jewelry shop. Uh, if it is better, I should be present. You please excuse my departure. Is it all right, Captain Friday? Yes, let him go. Very well. We'll expect you back for lunch. Yes, one always return at feeding hour. Huh. You notice the way that bird looks at you? I think he has interesting eyes. Yeah, the eyes of a fanatic. Taquan would as soon slit your throat as look at you. In the courtyard of the typical Saigon Hotel on the coast of French Indochina sit Captain Friday, his right-hand man Skip Turner, and the famed archaeologist Dr. Howard Carter. Outside the terrace, the sun is blazing and smoldering. Within the cool shade, Captain Friday is unfolding a plot of intrigue. Dr. Carter, there's something very, very peculiar going on in Cambodia at the present time. You've seen something? Well, to begin with, the French authorities almost went down on their knees to me this morning, begging me to accompany your party. Well, that's strange. Hey, you mean we've got to be our armed guard? No. At least I don't think there's danger for your party, Dr. Carter. There's something else. If it was dangerous, they'd simply forbid you to go north. And Taquan seemed frightened at the idea of you joining our party, Captain. Yes, I think I know why. I don't believe Fenlo committed suicide on the ship. I think he's reached Cochin, China, and is hiding out, awaiting an opportunity to connect with Taquan again. Why do you think that, Captain? Well, if Fenlo is alive, and a friend of Taquan... It would explain why Toquan wouldn't want me on the trip. Oh, sure. He knows we'd nab him and turn him into the French government. Uh oh, here come the gals. <laughs> oh, this is much more fun. And besides that, we'll have to get some clothes suitable for the trip. Hey, don't you ever talk about nothing but clothes? Oh, I've already got mine, Patricia. Dad gave me a whole list of things before we left San Francisco. Would you go sit down? No, thank you, Dr. Carter. I'm going to look over Celia's outfits for the trip. We'll need a lot of things to go into the interior. You hear that, Captain? <laughs> yes, I was afraid of that. Father, I'm going to stay with Patricia at her hotel tonight. There's so many details to discuss. Do you mind? Mm, not at all, my dear. I hope the budget will provide proper traveling equipment, boss. <laughs> I think we'll manage. I see where this trip's going to cost you money, Captain. <laughs> Goodbye. We'll Bye. see you later. Bye, folks. <laughs> Uh, this is Patricia's first big adventure. Well, here now, Dr. Carter. You and Skip draw your chairs up. I want to talk to you. Mm-hmm. Just as I thought. Just as you thought about what? I knew you had something up your sleeve all along. Well, I have. You'd better keep it up yours, too. Dr. Carter, how important is the seven-headed cobra in the lives of the people of Cambodia? What? 
Why, it's the most sacred emblem in existence. It represents a supreme being himself to these people. Did you ever hear of the emerald seven-headed cobra coiled on a base of pure gold? The sacred cobra of Topram. What if it were stolen from the country? Stolen? Why, what are you talking about, man? The Topram cobra has been lost for centuries. Its existence is entirely legendary. But supposing its existence were known to be fact, that its whereabouts were surmised, what would that mean? Is that the truth? Are you talking facts? Now, wait a moment. Answer my question. The recovery of the top prom cobra would mark a new era in the history of Cambodia. It would mean that everyone with a drop of Khmer blood in his veins would migrate back to the north. It would mean the rebuilding of the Khmer Empire. And why would it mean that? Yeah, how come it's so doggone important? The people have been waiting for this sign ever since the downfall of the empire. The seven-headed emerald cobra vanished just before the kingdom fell. At that time, one of the great priests prophesied the end of the empire and added that the Khmer people would be as scattered sands over the earth until the cobra reappeared. So the return of the cobra king would be the fulfillment of an ancient prophecy. Well, come, what is it all about? Answer me, Captain. I, I tell you, if there's any truth in your words, we are about to witness one of the strangest transformations in a country that has ever taken place. Is it true? The French authorities are fearfully wrought up. I'm afraid it's true. Afraid? Afraid? Why, man, I'd give my life to see this thing happen. Why, there would sweep up this great valley one seething throng of humanity. It would be one mammoth crusade with men, women, and children turned into a maddening mass of religious frenzy. That's just exactly what the French officials fear. Why, these people would go into this wilderness and turn it into an inhabitable place overnight. Undoubtedly, they'd try. But think of the hundreds and thousands of these people, stirred by religious fervor, who would die miserably in that wilderness. Oh, there'll be no holding them once the news of the cobra spread about. Yeah, the French officials know that, too. Now, tell me, Doctor, what would happen if the cobra were stolen? There would be such an uprising as this world has never witnessed before. It'd make the Boxer Rebellion seem insignificant. Every foreigner in Cochin, China, would be cut down without mercy. Hey, uh, is this diamond snake, or whatever you call it, worth anything? I mean, in good, round American dollars. I know an institution in London that would pay $5 million for it. Uh, hey, Captain, did you say you know where this gold snake is? I did not, but Taquan knows. What? Taquan knows if anybody does. Good gosh, and here we've let him slip out of our hands. Well, how do you figure that, Skip? He just walked down the street to a jewelry stop to meet Professor Lebrun and Perry Mills. Yeah, but ain't he liable to make a duck for the high timber? I have implicit faith in Taquan. He won't run. He's known about it for a number of years. He was just waiting for the right time to reveal his secret. But why is the present the time to strike? Both he and Fenlow are prepared. They're well-educated. They're capable leaders. They've been groomed for this role of prophets with tremendous care by the old men, the Khmer high priests. Hey, you're just full of information. Where'd you dig it up? From the French intelligence service here in Saigon. They've been watching the natives for years. But still, I don't understand, Captain. Why do they want you to go into the North Country? Why don't they send one of their own spies who knows the country and the people? Every available man they have is known to the commerce priest. Be hey, careful, Captain. There's a pop-eyed Hindu rug peddler standing behind you. Mm. Be on your way! <laughs> Look at him skitter. Skip, I think your Hindu was a Cambodian. Yeah, well, I'll bet he carries a knife a foot long under those rugs, whatever he is. Go on with your story, Captain. Well, as I say, Taquan's coming and the mysterious disappearance of Fen Lo have thrown the authorities into a panic. It came too unexpectedly. They're not prepared. And so they want to make you the goat. I jumped at the opportunity. Yeah, but what are we going to do after we get up there? Hmm? Keep our eyes open, keep our ears open, see what we can see, hear what we can hear. Is that all, Captain Friday? Those were my instructions from the French authorities. Captain Friday, I think I know what you have in mind. If I'm correct in my surmise... I beg you, don't do it. I beg you to remain in Saigon. Be careful, Doctor. That little Anamite woman has passed by our table three times in the last ten minutes. Hey, you mean that cute little trick with the black umbrella? Oh, <laughs> oh careful, Skip, careful. Hello, here comes Professor Lebrun. How uh, did you get your precious gem, Professor? Yes, we did very well. Uh, oh, Dr. Carter, will you go down to the Ling place, two doors the other side of the Continental Hotel terraces? You know the place. Yes, but what's the matter? Where's Taquan? Why didn't he return with you? Taquan is waiting for Dr. Carter. Waiting for me? Mm, then I'd better hurry. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. I'll take no longer than necessary. Well, what do you know about that? Hey, Captain, what kind of a shenanigan is this? My word, Skip. What is suspicious nature? Yeah, well, I've seen you pull some smart ones before. Are you sure you ain't long on this expedition as something besides medical advisor for Dr. Carter? Oh, come, Skip. We are all one big family now. Yeah? Professor Lebrun... Just how much of Taquan's history do you know? Only what he has chosen to tell me. A very lucid explanation. Thanks. 
but not in the least satisfactory. Oh, see here, Captain. Really, now that is most embarrassing. Listen, Professor. There must be something up, or why all this evasiveness? My dear Captain Friday, has it ever occurred to you that uh, personal information given in confidence is information not to be belly about the town? Good. That answers my question. Most gratifying, I'm sure. Aha. Uh -huh. Here comes Taquan himself. But he's alone. Where's Dr. Carter? Hey, things are beginning to move. Taquan, where's the doctor? I have here a message for Professor Lebrun and for Captain Friday. Message? Message from whom? You uh, will read it, sir. Uh, yes, of course. Taquan, what does this mean? I know not what is in message. Lebrun, do you know anything about this? <laughs> not having seen it. Well, uh... read it. <laughs> well, 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 well. It looks like uh, Dr. Carter's in an hurry. Hmm? Hey, what's the matter? What are you talking about? The message is from Dr. Carter. He says he's leaving immediately from Angkor Wat. The party is to follow at once in charge of Captain Friday and uh, myself. Gone? Dr. Carter's gone? Why? My dear sir, I haven't the slightest idea. Taquan, who'd he go with? The Captain Friday was quite right. Fenlo is not dead. <laughs> Dear. Are you awake, Patricia? Isn't it the limit? I'm so excited I can't even close my eyes. You sleepy? Mm, not very. It's a shame. Me rolling and tossing and sighing after bringing you over to my hotel. <laughs> Bed's nice, though, isn't it? I didn't suppose they had beds like this up in this part of the world. Wasn't it the most curious thing? The way your father just up and left us? I hope Dad's all right. It'd be terrible to have anything happen to him. That... Taquan gives me a creepy feeling. Well, I hope Captain Friday and the professor get on together. They're to be joint leaders of the party until we get to Angkor Wat. <sighs> Just think of it. Angkor. A place you read about in books. I never dreamed of actually seeing it. Cambodia. The realm of the Cobra King. <sighs> and tomorrow we leave Saigon. Tomorrow. I'm certainly glad we did our shopping this afternoon. Mm-hmm. Must be beautiful to the north. Your father was telling us. Red and purple flowers, poinsettias, rhododendrons, orange and yellow lilies, cane and coconut and bananas and bamboo and rice and cactus and creepers. Can you imagine a country like that, Celia? Oh, go on to sleep. Huh? Well, what'd you say, Patricia? Go on to sleep, Celia. I was just daydreaming. Oh, I'm sorry. Listen. Hmm? I left the window open. Did you hear anything? Uh, what are you talking about? Didn't you hear a noise at the window? Of course not. You're all nerves tonight, Patricia. It isn't nerves. I heard something. Well, what did it sound like? I, I don't know. Listen. I don't hear anything. Just the usual night noises, baby crying, that sort of thing. That isn't what I mean. There, there. What was it like? Kind of, oh, I don't know, like like the wind or, or rustling of paper or, or something. Well, we're only one story off the street. We're liable to hear almost anything. Keep quiet. Listen. There. Patricia. Sounds like steam escaping. Hush, Patricia. Patricia, do you know what that is? No. Patricia, there's a cobra in this room. Not a, a snake? Yes. <gasps> Look there in the moonlight. <laughs> please, please don't scream. Don't put your hand over my mouth. You mustn't scream. You mustn't. Oh, what's that? Look. Watch the cobra. It's raising its body. Oh. Terror of Cambodia has descended upon the Carter expedition. The cobra, emblem of the ancient Khmer civilization, has raised its head in defiance against this party of invading Americans. And it wasn't until Captain Friday, his secretary Patricia, and the reckless Skip Turner joined the expedition that trouble began. 
You have just heard the second chapter of The Cobra King Strikes Back, a new thriller in the series of Adventures by Morse. Next week, you will hear chapter three entitled The Mad King of Anchor, which will take you deeper and deeper into the jungles and into the sinister intrigue of French Indochina. <laughs> 